Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Manchester City easily beat Luton Town 5-1 on Saturday to go top of the table. Liverpool falter at home in a crucial match, losing 1-0 at home to Crystal Palace and lose ground in the title race. Arsenal also shockingly drop points at home, losing to Aston Villa 2-0, putting a serious dent in their title hopes. Manchester United continue to stutter, drawing at Bournemouth 2-2. And Newcastle United dominate Spurs behind Alexander Isak's two goals, winning 4-0. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. Well, before we get to the games, Musty, ahead of this summer's Paris Olympics, our buddy, Pro Soccer Talks Joe Prince Wright, is continuing his countdown of the top ten moments in Olympic soccer history. Head to NBCSports.com forward slash soccer to watch moment number six, which is Carly Lloyd's gold medal winning strike for the US women's national team. That was in Beijing in 2008. And stay tuned for moment number five. That airs this Thursday. So, great series by Joe Prince, right? Mm. We'll be looking in on those. But we were looking on this weekend, mate, at what probably is a pivotal weekend in the title running. Uh, we won't probably know that till May the 19th when the silverware's handed out. But um, Was it the craziest Sunday? Yes, the, well, the craziest Sunday we've ever done. It's uh, the it's actually, NBC in, in 10, like, like, for one day for shocking and. Well, in, can, I, can, can I extend that? Go on, more then. than one day. Just think of the, the goals that went own goals, Rob. Goalkeeping mistakes, goals misses, that, from, misses from five or six yards, hitting posts and not going in <laughs> goals. I mean, it's, it's been an incredible weekend. Uh, every end of the table, whether you whether you top, middle, or bottom. Uh, and us like to make look pretty pretty <laughs> foolish with predictions uh, I mean, and what this we league, expected. Well, this league makes it makes a fool of I everyone. Know, let, let, let's start off as the games kicked off yeah. this, this weekend. Let's start goal, with yeah. Manchester City. Manchester City were at home to Luton Town. Now, if I'm right, I think Man City beat Luton six one in the FA Cup. Erling Haaland got five goals. Um, it was a kind of game where you think, and, and, and I said before, I think, I, sorry, I said after the game that it, in some respects it's a statement by City, although you expect them to win it and not by the team, but the way that they go about their business. And uh, it was 1-0 at half-time, an own goal, Hashioka mm. uh, scored off his face, off his face uh, an Erlen Haaland blast in his mm. face that nearly took his head off, but mm. ends up only 1-0 one nil, one nil at half-time. Luton... Defending deep, as, as you'd expect, looking for the odd counter-attack that, that might come, uh, caught Morris at the top end of the pitch. And at 1-0 at half-time, Rob, there's still work for City to do. And it, well, didn't we still, say this last time? It's still in the balance, they, they, they just, they don't play football. They don't play in the first half. They just yeah. play 45-minute games. And those games, 45 minutes in the second half, is another example where they play football, of course, and mm. they were winning one now. Then, then they, they, they really step it up, go through the gears in, yeah. in the second half of games to, mm. to win games quite easily. And... Listen, we're going to get to all the details and stuff. Um, but when you see City winning games as easy as they, as they do, and also, you know, again, this is in that window where games are yeah, going on at the same yeah, time. If you look out. at the lineup, Rob, and, and there was changes to Arsenal that we'll yeah. get to and, and a little bit less so for Liverpool, isn't it still down to City's squad? Nobody can rest mm. and rotate. Mm. Nobody can rest and rotate. Go on. I, I cut. Nobody can rest and rotate yeah. like City as if nothing's happened. It doesn't affect their game plan, doesn't affect their creativity, doesn't affect their goal scoring ability. You look at the, the uh, yeah. again, they've got very few injuries. You know, they rested Rodri, Bernardo Silva, Phil yeah, Foden. Rodri got the rest, yeah. You know, and yeah. I know these, mm. these guys come on oftentimes, but, you know, we'll get to Arsenal in terms of the changes that they made. But it, it, it still seems to me that this squad, with a massive caveat, a massive asterisk that. It might have been illegally assembled. Okay, yeah, and we I'll know that. that because yeah. I know a lot of our. We have to, we have to put that out. Well, and we, we continue, Will, well, and that, and that yeah. is, is we, the asterisk. If it's a legally uh, assembled squad, then things are going to we'll change. Find out that, and, and well, wish, we wish we knew. But, but, no. but let's, you know, stick to the football as we are yeah. now uh, on what we know. And I'm going to challenge you. I'm going oh, to an early challenge in that. Jeremy Doku, I saw, I, I saw Manchester City play uh, re recently. I, I was over in the in England, um, and I've got to be honest to you, mate. Jeremy do Doku mm. was, was 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 not very good. If, if I'm being honest, he was he was running down cul-de-sacs. Everybody, everybody has a bad game. Correct, and I'm not saying, but he was. He'd had a bad little period again. He'd had two or three bad games where he's starting to question: mm, Is this is this good? 
Yesterday game against uh, Luton, Rob, he was outstanding. Yeah, he Possibly the, one of the man in the match. He won a mm. penalty. So Guardiola scores a beautiful goal. So Guardiola's an interesting one. Scores it. Scores against yeah. Real Madrid. No world beater, Rob. He's no world beater. He might not he's even really, get in there. Yeah, he might not. He's even, a really good, he player. good player. He's a really to, good to player. I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying any of them are bad players, but any player who's playing in a Premier League team that's in the running is, is, is not a bad player. But what I'm trying to say to you, I don't think it, 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 I don't think we give enough credit to just saying like, oh, it's his squad. He's got great. He's got the best yeah. players. So yes. What are you, what are you saying? Well, What's well, your I'm point? Saying, what is my, your point my, to, my point to me is saying that, that they haven't got the best, is, they've got my, the best my, squad? My point is that Curtis Jones has a good days and, and is a good player. Harvey Elliott is. Right. Zobber's why he is. But they're not off. as good. They, they're not as good. Well, they, they've shown that for, for most of the season, they could be as good. And so on one day when they have a good day, I don't think we can just... I think it's too easy a label to keep on going, well, he's got the best players, oh, he's got they've spent the most money. Gavardi was, was available. Didn't see too many mm. other, others buying him. Um, Kovacic was available after no, Chelsea. No. Didn't see too many others yeah, going no, I in. I agree. I agree. But, but um, we keep on saying, well, he's yeah, got but, the but best players. It's easy. Well, it's good recruitment then. It's easy. Other, play, other teams have people coming in the team. Jesus comes into an Arsenal team who's an ex-Manchester City title winner and actually doesn't play that well. Max, he doesn't play that well. So he's a good player, but he doesn't play that well. I just think that sometimes we've got to give... You know what? There's, there's more to that he's a best player. There, there's, there's more to... That, that Manchester City with 1-0 one nil, one nil up at half-time and their football and their drive and their hunger to get the job done gives them a five-goal win. That's a difference. So you think it's not so much the squad is better than others or too much better than others. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the drive that Correct. they have. What Correct. The experience is from the manager. Correct. I mean, I'm, you know... The, 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 the guy, Rodri, remember, was, was felt so tired that he had to rest. This is the guy well, who... So, yeah, and they, and they change the team, Rob, and they win 5-1. Yeah, I know, and, and that's down to them. That's down to them driving and keep on winning. Because th th they could have drawn that game 2-2, and guess what the first thing you say? Well, some of these players ain't as good as some of the others. Yeah, but City so many times, Rob, get the results and yeah, they and they mix and and, and, they and, and, and trying to fight on the Champions League and the Premier League. The the way that they can walk us on the bench. I didn't see that drive. From, I didn't see that drive from Liverpool. They weren't playing as well. I didn't see that drive from Arsenal. Second half, they didn't play that well. Whether they're tired, whether Europe, whatever. I didn't see that same drive that I see at Manchester. And there City. were some changes in Arsenal, which we'll get to. Yeah. There were some changes in there to try Correct. and maybe help that. Um, I, again. I, I, City changed things around. We yeah. don't even know from one week to the next, Rob, what the team's going to be. I it, mean, it's... Akanji was in midfield, Rob, and, and starting and play. He did the John Stones thing. To you know, you know what's interesting. There's another little take on this, right? And and we've heard this a lot. And and, and for some situations, this is absolutely true. The goals mm. win games, defense win yeah. championships. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that this season. I think it's goals and those who can score. They well, can win games easily. Liverpool should be, should be Man City now have got the most goals scored in the league. Yeah. I mean, only by one, by Arsenal, mm. by some good performances. But I feel like in the tight games, right, where, you know, it's nervy, they need to win the game, Man City just create more. They've got more match winners when they really need it. And goal scorers, with Erlen Haaland's the best goal scorer in, in Europe in terms of the, the way that he finishes off chances. We get to the other teams again. We, of course we will yeah. in the next two, two segments here, but you know th their ability to take the chances, to not miss from five or six yards out that the other two teams did on, well, on this Super aren't, Sunday. Aren't, aren't City a combination of that? I think I read a stat yesterday when we were doing that. It, the last four winners have either been had the best defensive record or joint best defensive record in the league. So... There's got to be an attention yeah. to that as well. But don't you think, Rob, that, you know, that the score in the goals and the multiple goals all the time is what wins the games? It's almost like if, you, if you're going to grind, if, you're gonna, if you've got a great defensive record like mm. Arsenal and mm. you go to City and you get a point, you know, and they didn't score again today. Well, not again. That's kind of harsh. I don't mean that. But they didn't score today. City's yeah. kind of continual goal threat and creativity Possibly, and banging yeah, the goals maybe, in. You know, they win the got, three points. They win the guy three at the points. top of the pitch who's got the most goals in the league. Oh, so anyway, what do you th we thought we were going to be short on City, by the way. So, but but no, it's impressive, Rob, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it they, is impressive. And they go pole position, mate. They go to pole position yeah, from pole third position. in the league. I'm I not know, too sure. Know, they go I to know. pole. Yeah. It's mid-April. It's when they do what they do. And do you know what? I think it's nine. We've had 19 changes at the top of the league. I'm not sure we're going to get another. Well, I'm not sure we're going to get another. Well, and this has come about because as we move on, we're doing yeah. this in chronological order. This was on Saturday. And as expected, yeah. Man City win the game 5 1. Fast forward, Sunday. Mm. Sunday, first game, 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time, Liverpool versus Crystal Palace. Me and you in the studio, yeah. we're saying things like, 
you know, at this point in the season, mm. Anfield, yeah. Jurgen Klopp, they played the Europa, a bit of a, bit of a bad game, mm. but they've got to be absolutely fired up for this game. And it, and it, and it was a shocker. And, and, and the results, you know, like I said at the start there, maybe the most shocking Sunday we've, we've ever had. They lose the game 1-0. Iberoche, as they scored in the 14th minute, Rob. Yeah. Um, we expected the huff and puff from Liverpool. Mm. Which we, which we got to some extent. The chances missed were the story, I think, on this. And Jurgen Klopp afterwards said, yeah. you know, I, it, we, like, I think you said it, Rob, early on, I think the second chance, that, that, that maybe a save, and you yeah. said, is it going to be one of those days for Liverpool? Mm-hmm. Well, it was one of those days yeah. where Klopp's looking at it, and there's, I, mean, I wrote down four chances in the second half that were within seven yards yeah. that, that should have... You can't really legislate for. A couple of things on that, and, and I know we, 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 the focus is seeing... I gotta to go to Palace oh, first. I gotta to go to yeah. Oliver Glasner. Don't mind I gotta to go to his setup, his oh. three four three. I've got to go to his positional play of Eze and Elise. It challenged Liverpool in a full back and midfield. Kept area. them narrow, kept the back kept four really narrow. narrow. And then had Munoz and Mitchell in the wide areas. There's always an outlet. Whose team was set up? Had Jefferson Lerma, my friend. <laughs> Jefferson Lerma, the <laughs> midfield player who yeah, was over, He's over 30 now. He playing his left side centre back, back of three with yeah. Anderson you had and Nathaniel Klein. Klein uh, another centre back. Right side centre back. Mm. Um, and it was a brilliantly well set up, well planned, orchestrated performance where Palace, listen, could have lost 6 1 and could have won 2 0. Yeah. But, couple of good chances yeah just to follow that up Rob and we were yeah. going to do a little um, a little analysis on 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 that and yeah. the left side first half uh, Palace mm. was so good with as a yeah, I did a little breakdown on, on the uh, our tactic session oh did you left hand side you? yeah yeah you should look at that on, our, on the mm. NBC Sports YouTube channel then the, the tactic session because Mitchell had so much space over mm. there and he got so many crosses in the goal comes from lovely football yeah. I was just, I mean, and I did a little breakdown in the lineups, Rob, about Palace and yeah, how they're I mean, now under Glasner. They're a different, they're a different team, and mm. this shows the power of a coach and the yeah. difference a, a coach can make in terms of being on the front foot. I mean, I don't want to use too many buzzwords, but the, the medium block yeah. or or a high high press is what mm. they do. And again, we saw against Man City, they lost the game, but they had some good opportunities, and it made it very difficult, Rob, for for Liverpool to play through that press. Yeah. And the football that they played, the front foot nature, and the fact that the front three was Michael Elise, Abreu Eza, and Jean-Philippe Mateta is the front three that the Palace fans have waited so long to see yeah. with Oliver Glasner as coach, with the 3-4-3, there's your front three, and they delivered on everything that you would expect at Anfield, yeah. and we've both played at Anfield, yeah. Rob, and I, had no, I got nothing from Anfield, and maybe some draws, I think, I mean, maybe got something in the League Cup. But it's such a difficult mm. place to go and be that brave on the front foot. I mean, yeah, we'll get to Liverpool, yeah. but rightly so. I thought Crystal Palace were so, so good, impressive. And the new guy, it, it looks like... And I'm, I'm saying this, by the way, on two wins. I think they've only had two wins yeah, since Yeah, this is only manager. second win. But yeah, you, I, I'm saying won. it right yeah. now, they've got yeah. a good one. Yeah. They've got a good one in yeah, Oliver Glasgow. It's a little time. It's a different system, yeah. different way of playing. Yeah. Um, should I just get my underappreciated performer? As we're on, as we're on we, Palace. As we're on Palace. Are you going to do a Palace? It, it was a Palace player, and, and it's my friend Jefferson Lerma. It's Jefferson Lerma, Rob, who played centre, left side centre back. And I, yeah. before the game, said to yeah. Ahmed, this is yeah. an area to look at. Yeah. Lerma v Salah down that side yeah. of the pitch. When if Salah most, gets past if Mitchell. When Salah gets yeah. past Mitchell, we got problems. Mm. We didn't have problems, actually. Jefferson Lerma was, was incredible, incredible. For, for um, Crystal Palace in his defending and his positional play and in in his drive and, and, and you know Salah didn't have, have, have a great game so all round underappreciated team of the week would be Crystal Palace individual performance of the week underappreciated performance yeah. of the week Jefferson Murray. amazing and I, and I just want to before we move on to Liverpool a little bit more Joachim Anderson a centre back mm-hmm. I thought was outstanding mm-hmm. Nathaniel Klein as well yeah. and Tarek Mitchell mm-hmm. Tyrick Mitchell Rob he's 24 years of age a left sided player under the radar um, I thought he was excellent as well. The whole back five, yeah, when yeah. they had to get into a five, yeah. they did, were brilliant, brilliant against the front line that we've enjoyed so much at Liverpool. Unfortunately um, for Palace, mm. great win, great three points. Um, I think, you know, puts Glasner on the map a little bit more. People will understand him. But the talking point is, is Liverpool, really. Isn't it? Yeah. People are going to talk about Liverpool, missed opportunity, mm. missing chances at the top end of the pitch. Yeah. Conceding goals now, I think that's nine straight home Premier League games they've conceded a goal, Rob. Mm. And, mm. and you talked about Man City having the ability to yeah. 
score. shoot the way out, yeah, out of danger. Yeah. Liverpool, we thought could do that. Yeah, it, with the front it's becoming less, got. isn't it? Or there's, there's a bit more doubt into that now. Mm. Wasn't a Darwin Nunez day. Nope. Wasn't a Mo Salah day. Nope. Luis Diaz buzzed mm, around, but didn't really. have, they have quality. J Jota, come missed on, missed a chance, missed a good, a good chance, and then from there the midfield, midfield didn't control the game, and I thought they were. Yeah. You, you yeah. touched on that, didn't you? An yeah. area where they got three yeah, they got players, three. Liverpool against two of Palace. That's an area where they should dominate. Never really happened. Never did. I mean, again, a lot of it does go back to Palace. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, and, and there was a chaotic nature a little bit to Liverpool, and mm. we've seen that in the last couple of games. They allowed the Man United game to become end-to-end, -end, and they and they fell to a couple of goals. Uh, one mistake and one great goal from um, from Maynu. But again, it was a bit of a pair and scare and huff and puff, try and find a way through, and they nearly did. They nearly did. Yeah. I just, you know, <laughs> we got into Arsenal, but it, their football is so... Liverpool's is so kind of fast and... Yeah. Um, anything can happen and we'll find a way they yeah, often yeah, do yeah. find a way with yeah, the forward players yeah. that they've got but for some reason those front players have gone quiet and Mo Salah after coming off his, his recent injury, injury just doesn't seem to be as threatening or as dangerous maybe it's the players behind him and maybe mm. it's the you know the, the the supply of balls which is lacking yeah. when you consider McAllister Endo I thought Endo struggled today yeah you know and he's been good and he's been good um, and Curtis Jones is back from an injury as well. He was he was yeah he was in for Zobbers Zobbers line, wasn't line, yeah. But back. Kanate was there. Yeah. Allison's back in goal. It's only Trent Alexander-Arnold that probably would be out of sight of the best eleven for Liverpool. Yeah. He came on yeah. and looked better. Liverpool yeah. were better in the second half, mm -hmm. much better. Jurgen Klopp said, but just couldn't score. They yeah. couldn't score yeah. at home against Crystal Palace, Robin. You know, at this point in the season, the the, the last thing you need is your star players, your mm. difference makers, because yeah. let's face it, the front players in Liverpool have been what's really been, been appealing yeah, and, yeah. and and effective you, you for them. Why they, they they, go and there, they've yeah. gone off a little bit. Um, six games left. They're going to have to win all the games from now on. Um, you made an interesting point on the broadcast, Rob, that you we were talking about it. I think he's got two more home games left in the Premier League, Jurgen Klopp. Yeah. Don't know with Europe now, depending on what happens yeah. with Atalanta. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we're, we're starting to close the, the book and close the chapter. And you talked about the fans and the role that they may have. And Ahmed mm. said, you know, what could go wrong for Liverpool, what, what might not be right. And, and you said the fans will have a role yep. to play and that they didn't really happen it today. Didn't really happen. The, 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 the crowd were quiet. There was a little no. bit of a, there was times in the game, but uh, Robin, it was like Palace had some possession and working it. And listen, Liverpool have seen that before. They've been yeah. down against Barcelona and come yeah. back. Yeah, it didn't, it felt strangely. And it's difficult sometimes because you're in the studio, you're not in the ground. Uh, you know, so much better. Like so Stephen Warnock and Joe Spate, our commentator, there, did a brilliant job on, on the game, I thought. But um, just didn't feel well, like the, the Anfield that we've, you know, one one game, one loss in the last 58 at, at home or something. But, but, think back to the Sheffield United game. I think it took like the 75th yeah. minute oh, McAllister yeah, comes in. Yeah, they they struggled a little bit. To, to yeah. Then the next home game after that is Atalanta. They got beat 3-0, Rob, on Thursday. They got beat 3-0 at Anfield. Yeah. And I'm just giving you reasons why yeah. the home fans might be like, oh, maybe, we're, maybe we ain't go quite good way, enough. Rob. Isn't that well, more... Well, you thought they'd have really pulled up, but yeah. maybe they've seen in the last couple of home maybe games, we ain't, maybe ain't that good. Maybe we, we're not. It's not quite right for us this year, and maybe this is going to be anticlimax for for the manager. It ain't going to be what they all dreamed it would yeah. be for this yeah. great man yeah, who's yeah. going to be departing at the end of the season. I, I don't know because mm. at some point in that second half, um, I'm expecting Anfield to flip in, get behind the team, and roar yeah. them home. Yeah. And I guess it, it nearly happened. Mm. You know, the yeah, chances, you know, everything in, we're saying about this, Rob, yeah, if one because of them we do in, say, we do talk about results, right? And it's nil one, Crystal Palace at home. But those chances, I mean, mm. another day, I mean, what Jurgen Klopp, and they have created incredible opportunities that they didn't take. So, and, and, and it's, it, again, stats can be done however you want. There's some stat out there, Rob, that says Liverpool's shots at goal or shots in games, they've scored, they've scored three more goals in Newcastle we're taking 200 more shots, which is a trend. Do you know what, mate? I'll be honest here. Stats are starting to annoy me. <laughs> I'm getting fed up with stats. Well, well, I just what, 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 what? I'm just getting fed up with stats. Yeah, but if, if, if a stat is, is, is... I don't care about stats anymore. So if, I'm fed up with them. So today... No, it's but so today, hard to, 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 cor to correlate stats with particular games. Every game's so different. Of course it is. So today's game would back up the stat that for the amount of chances Liverpool have, they're not scoring enough goals is the point right. that the stat right. is, is making. All right. And today, the amount of chances that Liverpool have, 
they should have been three. We talk about the goal scores that they've got. So, so, so are we back on erratic finishers? No, I'm just Salah's saying, not an erratic no, I, finisher. I, I, Salah's a great finisher. Yeah, but Jota's a great finisher. I'm trying I know to say, out. despite the goals that they've got, they're still they're having a lot, a lot of more chances to get, to get, those, get goals. those goals. So today would be an extreme but, example of correct. Actually, you've had one of those and you didn't get your goal. But another stat. I mean, they're still goals. The goal scored are right up there. They're like three or four behind. I don't know. I mean, I think game of football, Rob, is so individual. And I know, I don't know, at any game of football, the ball can bounce a different way, it can spin off a of post and can. spin around yeah, a corner yeah. and come off two bars and all this. There's so much, there's so much variables in football that, it's, that stats, to apply stats over a, even a 38-game period, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I think at this point, I, 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 I think fans worry about the, the teams winning, winning the game. I don't care about who scores a goal. Man City had an own goal to start with. They go on and, and dominate. Um, and Liverpool, we don't we think Liverpool, their attack is the strongest part of their, their yeah, game? Yeah, but today, they lost the game because they didn't take their chances. That's the, that's the story of the game. It is the story of the game, yeah. Liverpool had the chances to win the game and they didn't take them. Mm. Mm. I, it was just, uh, well, it is, you know, the, the whole Jurgen Klopp coming to an end thing, it's just astonishing to me that, that, we, that basically nobody knows. What a week they've got coming up, by the way. Well, they had a terrible Atalanta, week. Had a terrible Atalanta week. On, on Thursday, away. Wolverhampton Wanderers, yeah. away at the weekend. Yeah. Need to, well, whatever happens in on, on, yeah. on, on I mean, on, on Are Thursday. they going to go for it now, Rob, on Thursday? Would you think, if they'd have won the game today, right, and they're sat in a really yeah. nice spot yeah. joint top I, of the league I, I table. I think they have to, Rob. I, th I think they now have to. Now they have to go to more if they have won. So more losing so. that game, like, you know, well, we might we might be out the, yeah, we're you, not out you the might, race, but yeah. we might find it difficult. To win the this. We want this trophy. We want to we want to do our, the best we can to get yeah. that trophy. And if that doesn't that team. doesn't work, Play the best then you go to Wolves and you deal with that after. Yeah. yeah. So Liverpool didn't take the opportunity, Robbie, yeah. to to stay in the race. So or surely stay Arsenal Liverpool. must go top of the table surely. and go four points clear and uh, uh, of Liverpool and it was all set up, kind of. Yeah, they they know the results. They watch the games. They're probably feeling pretty <laughs> good about themselves. And to be fair, so the first thing we've got to talk about, Robbie, Earl, and of course, listen. I, I understand this gets more of a story with the result. Changes, OK? Now, I said to you just after the game, Rob, in our studio, the team against Bayern Munich on Tuesday mm -hmm. at Arsenal was what I think everybody would assume is their best team, right? Yeah. I think we know that Kivior played, White yeah. played fullbacks, yeah. Jorginho held, Odegaard, Rice as the eights, mm -hmm. Martinelli one side, Saka the other side, Kai Havertz has done really well up front. Mm -hmm. That was the team that drew 2-2. Yeah. Difficult game, Bayern yeah, Munich yeah. showed up. Mm -hmm. like they, they've been awful okay. this season, yeah, but they okay. showed up. Now, Mikel Arteta makes changes, two changes to that front three. Jesus yeah. plays up front. Havertz was in the side, but played yeah. in midfield. And Trossard played for Martinez right, on the left-hand left side. Yeah. Now, I know I'm a smart ass now afterwards, mm. but is there anything, before we get into the details, why didn't he play the same team? Well, well you, you've, uh, to answer your question, Pep Guardiola made changes yeah. and, and won. Yeah, so got a good squad. He's got yeah. a really good squad. So, if you, so you're saying those players aren't, weren't as good enough? No. I didn't, I didn't, I've got to be honest, I didn't You're think okay with, that, with those changes? I was, was, I it's, this is not their best team today. It was not no, Arsenal's best team. No, I'm not, I'm, so, the changes, not so worried about. I, the positional, I still would have kept Habits as the nine. Yeah. I would have kept Jesus out on the left-hand side because I think he'll work up and down for okay. you and then put Trossard in midfield. So I'm not so worried about the changes. I think the moving of Habits out of the yeah. number nine position was, was the biggest mistake yeah. he made. Yeah, I agree. Because he's, he's built a... Nice rapport yeah. and, and understanding, understanding now with, with confidence with goals. Him and Odegaard, the goals were coming. To so drop him back into that eight, to play him a little bit which deeper, he at which time, he hasn't done well. That runs. It looked more like the old Kai Habits. Yeah. All that being said, right? Okay. All that being said, mm. we're in the studio at half time, and Arsenal played well first yeah. half, really well. Moved the ball around. These little short passes are what, for me, is, is it identifies Arsenal. Mikel Arteta's mm. Arsenal. These little short passes that connect Odegaard's cleverness. Everybody else in that final third, uh, Saka down the right hand side. They didn't score the goal. They had a, a, a great chance in, in Leandro Trussard, Rob, to score from a few yards yep. out. And um, Martinez, a former Arsenal goalkeeper, mm. throws out a brilliant save there mm. to keep that one out. But at half time. I'm thinking, yeah, you, you're always going to brush teams away. You're always yeah, going to yeah. score first. I, I wasn't worried at half time. What the Ollie, happened? The Ollie Watkins hitting the post. Did yeah. Worry is a little yeah. reminder. Well, we of know what, the quality that yeah. Watkins brings, and we'll yeah. get. Don't worry, with Villa mm. fans, we'll get on to how good Villa were. By the way, yeah. second half. What happened to Arsenal, Rob? What happened to Arsenal second half? Lacked energy, lacked pace, 
When Arsenal don't play with that pace and energy and rhythm, quickness, they become a very different outfit, very different mm. team to play against. And I almost felt Villa got a bit comfortable with them. And the less pace was in the game, yeah. the more Villa they got dominated, stronger. got stronger, made chances, made good runs, had more shots in the game. I know you don't like stats, but the shots are stats. <laughs> and in the end, we're worthy winners, absolutely worthy winners. Can you explain the lack of intensity and energy? Right, because because if, if I had my way, yeah. right, yeah. maybe it'd been worse because I would have I would have picked the same the best yeah, team. So that what they might have been, you're saying that might have been tiredness. That, that I know that's... that I know that I know that the Champions League is a very important competition, Rob, and mm -hmm. I understand that Mikel Arteta is is has gained his experience yeah. from, from from City yeah. and he sees mm -hmm. what they do with the rotations yeah. Yeah. and and it kind of is a necessity through parts of the season. Yeah, of course. But given where they are and how close they are. Is it risky, Rob, to, 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 to rotate in the hope that people are going to be fresher? Because second half, and there wasn't that many rotations. Yeah, I did. I, I and subs honest, were made the, and they were still the flat. The, the subs, when they were made, did, wasn't as big an issue. I'll go back to the point. It was the positions that people played in. Because we were watching game and then you... Because I did the teams and, 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 and the lineups, which yeah. we go. And I said, have it yeah, said top. Yeah, just out of midfield. Just out of midfield, Jesus on the left-hand side. Mm. And, and, and then you said to me, Hey, you need to have a look at this five minutes and this doesn't look like yeah. it, you sat up. Yeah. That's what, to me, Rob, was the thing that Mikel Arteta... Listen, Mikel Arteta is going to be sitting at home and, and, and I just want to get to him for a moment. And he's going to be... If, if he has made a mistake with the rotation, he's going to know that. Mm. If he thinks, actually, I rotated and I didn't need to, he's going to know that. And, and, and it's what happens to him. I think Mikel Arteta now, Rob, this next week is going to be tested as a top-class manager. He's got, he's got a game against Bayern Munich that, mm. at this stage, he dare not... He's got, he's got to go for. He's got to Difficult. go for, Rob. Yeah, of course. He's got yeah. to go for. Play your best team. Yeah, and then he, he's, he's away at Wolves, yeah. and he's got to go and do, do the right th thing. Now, and then what he Chelsea, says, Chelsea on the Tuesday how he reacts, time. what he says, yeah, and how he, can, in, how he can motivate this group to go again is going to be the test of his management and his maturity. I have been uh, superbly impressed with Mikel Arteta to this point. Now we're talking, is, is, he, is, he, is he jumping into that elite group? Well, didn't we say this? Again, like, like and, I, and I always remember what Lee Dixon says. Lee Dixon's mm. been there, done it with yeah, Arsenal, yeah, got title, yeah, winner's yeah, yeah. medal, right? Mm -hmm. And to be fair to him, yeah. and he said this like three months He's ago. He's a few times, I don't, yeah. you know, It's going to be the last five or six games, that's when it gets yeah. like squeaky bum yeah. time, right? Yeah. And, it, and, it, and, and, and I think I said a few weeks ago, listen, we, we ain't going to know until those moments come what, how much Arsenal have learned from last year, how much they've improved, how much difference Declan Rice makes and, and having Saliba fit and stuff. And, and that's obviously still there. But how they react off the back of this is that I couldn't agree more. Because you know what everybody's going to be saying about the from bottlers, last year. Bottlers, you know, bottlers, they, bottlers, they, 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 for stuff. whatever reason, they, they fell away mm. and they're still not quite ready. It is critical. They, they put a good performance um, during a week at Wednesday away at Bayern Munich. And the Wolves away game is everything. The Wolves away game is everything. Mm. Because if they, they can win again at Wolves and, and whatever's at Bayern Munich yeah, yeah. to keep it tight... Because it is still tight, they're by still the way. In it, aren't it? Two, they're they're still two in points it. behind. They're one game swing, still in it. and there's there's six games left. But what they can't afford to do, Rob, is go to Wolves yeah. and yeah. lose. Because yeah. then all Even of the draw if City, that, if City, that, City yeah. Win. But the incredible hope, yeah. and there's yeah. so many Arsenal fans. I I mean, I bump. Every, there's so many Arsenal fans in this region and in America that are so yeah. optimistic and encouraged them. And we have been this of year we have, yeah. to lose another game and it feel like oh, it's all gonna is the last thing they need. Um, but anyway, positive, yeah. Aston Villa. Yeah, wow. Cool. Wow. I mean, their second half was, they forced but, Arsenal back, played some brilliant football. But let's just talk about the fellow in charge there, Rob, just to even things up as well. 1,001 games he's had. He had his thousandth game as a manager midweek in, against Lille in the uh, conference week. Mm. They, his team, Rob, were... Sort of hung in at times, and, and you know, goalkeeper made a couple of great saves. They're expertly set up. They absolutely know what they're doing when they hit on the counter. They build up through midfield. So if you go too narrow, they play in the wider areas. If you get spread out, they play you through the central areas. It's Ollie Watkins is absolutely perfect for the way that Unai Emery's team is set up. 
Um, and whether it's Diaby, Bailey comes on and, and has big moments, Zaniola has moments. You, the kid who's come from Middlesbrough, Rogers, looks a player. Looks really looks, good. Looks a find. Um, and it's a back four that, that know what they're doing, Rob. It, 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 he deserves so much credit. And, and all the focus today was on title running. The three big teams, Man City, Liverpool. By the way, Aston Villa, fourth in the league, Champions League, is important to them and is a story. And Unai Emery and, and his team deserve the headlines as well. They could now finish in fourth spot, guaranteed Champions League yeah. football. It's incredible. It's, it is incredible. And, and by the way, just in terms of teams and rotations, they played Thursday, yeah. two days, yeah, two, two days yeah. after um, Arsenal played Bayern Munich. And I know it's Lille and not Bayern Munich, so yeah. I understand that. But almost, and I wrote the, I've got the teams here, yeah. almost the same team. I think there's yeah. one change. Was, oh, Douglas, Douglas Luiz couldn't because he was yeah. suspended. Yeah, so John McGinn slots back into midfield. So they played a pretty much the same team yeah. and they got stronger in the second half, something that's, that's very, very strange and, and hard to... You know how they got so much better in the game. My underappreciated performer is Morgan Rogers, and uh, again from Middlesbrough, my club, and no bias there. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> just no bias there. No, but I, I, what my, I'm surprised how well he's done. Mm. I didn't think he would be a, 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 like straight in the side. Unai has mm. played Morgan yeah. Rogers straight yeah. from the start. I, mean, he's I think it was $19 million for Middlesbrough. He plays in a really important attacking midfield position. I think the first game he played for Villa, I remember it, and he looked a little shaky. And, I don't, and, I, and you, to be fair, you've always liked him. Yeah. Um, but the way that he's coming to this team in big games now and he's getting more comfortable, played in a different position, played on the right-hand side, dropping into midfield, or just away from Ollie Watkins as the deep striker. He keeps the ball well. Yeah. He's got a good size. He's got a lovely goal the other week yeah, where he, with, his with, with his left foot into, Brentford, that, into yeah. that corner. I, I, this is one of those underappreciated but more one to watch yeah. one to watch Rob mm. because I love a young player coming into a league and particularly into a club like Aston Villa which is a brilliant club and a great team with a great manager I just think he's one to watch I just, wanted, I just wanted to yeah. give him a mention yeah as, made him as more we go forward. consistent Morgan working with a coach like Unai Emery Rob he's only going to get better he's going to get minutes he, loves, he likes him, him plays him a lot so top three <sighs> oh, um, amazing I mean what a, what a weekend what a, what, a, what a boost for Manchester City Rob you know if, if, if we if we look just quickly back to Arsenal in terms of the big picture, Rob, let's have yeah. a quick minute on that. Um, Arsenal, would you would you agree that Arsenal now live have to win every game? Yeah, almost. Can you see he, Man City losing one of the final can't, six? I really can't, difficult. I, can't, I can see I him drawing. Thought, I, I can see him drawing. Yeah, one. you say maybe draw. I, I, That's two I can points see him winning out. I can see him winning uh, out. Of course they can, but if they're going to drop something, it'll yeah. be a draw. So that's two points. Yeah. So Arsenal will catch them. They got a better goal. Can difference. catch them if they win. If out. they win yeah. out. But let me just say the games. Some of the games they got. They got Chelsea. They got Tottenham away, North yeah. London derby. They got Man United. I think Man United away. Now Man United are, are a little bit. You don't know what you're yeah. going to get. They got to win all those. If they do it from here, like <laughs> yeah, fair play. Yeah, fair play. They, yeah, they, but, they've but, gunned. They've gunned uh, yeah. City down. I mean, uh, the City are, are big favourites now. Rob. They were favourites, Rob, when they were third, and they were a couple of points mm. behind in the same yeah. games. They're absolutely it's clear. The, the Liverpool thing is astonishing to me. I remember mm. looking at the league table. They're two points ahead when two I think the, the other two said played. They were and they're, they're I thought, top. wow, their yeah. favourites now with two yeah. points with that momentum, and, and that's how quickly this league changes. Amazing, amazing Sunday. Let's talk to a team that always a headline, mate. Oh. Um, it, it, it was it Vitality. It was Bournemouth two, Manchester United two. Um, never quite. I mean, I'm just letting you shake your oh. head and, and laughing because. Talk to me about no, Manchester can't. United. Oh, the first 45 minutes and where we are in the Eric Ten Hag developing this football club, moving this football club forward or not is the case. Maybe. Of all the things I've learned in the game, Rob, from playing, mm. from the coaching badges I've done both at UEFA level and yeah. here in the US Soccer Federation level, the one thing that, that's a common, really, is that the objective of the game, when you have possession, right, it's, it's good to spread out yeah, so yeah. you can create passing create avenues points, and you yeah. make players available and there's spaces to try and pull opponents apart. And when you don't have the ball, you kind of, you want the opposite. Yeah. You want it, you want Condense to be tight, so it's hard team, yeah, for opponents yeah. to play through your lines or, or play anywhere because you're nice and tight. I have never seen a Premier League team <laughs> that are so spread out. Yeah, yeah. Now, we've seen this, time. this is nothing new. Time. This is nothing yeah. new, and this has been pointed out before, yeah. about, you know, Maguire Quite wants to be deeper. 
the front players want to press high, high yeah. And, yeah. And, and you have this incredible different uh, mm. distance in between. Now, that just means that every team that play against Man United are going to get chances Chance, and opportunities because yeah. there's space to play. Yeah. And we had the number, Rob, what is it? Before this game, here it is, it's 554 Five shots faced yeah. by yeah. Man United, right? Which is the second most in the Premier League behind last place Sheffield United. Yeah. So, I mean, I, might now this, I like top, that stat. I mean, I like that stat. I was going to say, so I thought stats, you don't like stats. Yeah, oh, only when, oh, only when, only when you when like I use them, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we saw more evidence of that, Rob, um, in the first half that I that I labelled as embarrassing, right? And and in, in all my what I do, what we do here, mm. I try and be really respectful and not be too critical in a, in a in a you know in a in a harsh way because I understand what it's like. Mm. Um, I, I have never seen United as bad as that first forty-five minutes, and but, and, and I know the scoreline wasn't awful, but yeah. just in terms of yeah, they were two effort, one down organization. But, yeah. And with Eric Tiger on the sideline, just looking like a blank face that wasn't animated. Tell I, me I a couple of things here, then. And, and again, it's not pile on your night. It's not pile. It's trying to actually explain what's happening and how things may or may not improve. Tell me how Andoni Iriola can go in at Bournemouth with a group of players who are not as talented as Man United players, whatever you, you say, and create an identity way of playing that you can see and mm. understand whether they win, lose, or draw, Rob. He was manager of the month last month and great. Mm. But I'm, I'm talking about how does that happen at one club isn't happening at, at the other. And, and then tell me that how can you have a week? You've got no European football. You've got no... How can you have a week of preparation I know. I know. And, and, and see that? If, if you were a player, Rob, and that's happening, you're talking about when we're playing, I'd be going to gaffer. What's going on? Or you'd be asking in training, like, sometimes you, you don't, you're not... You're inquisitive, like, why are we doing this? You know, what work are we doing? Yeah. Is it, how is that going to help me on, on at the weekend? Well, the, the only way I can explain it is that there's changes at the football club. We did hear that, that the staff oh, and John the back Murty's room, now, yeah, we he? don't know what's yeah. going on. There's the ownership. Nobody knows if they've got a job. Mm. That That's I, affecting I, what's happening I, on I the think training so. pitch. Are the players the same? Are the players the same? Did they look like they were running around for the manager? They look like they're playing for the manager. Mm -hmm. Is the man manager experience that we've had with different situations at the club with players you know, on and off mm -hmm. the field? It doesn't look like the players are really that bothered right now, which is an incredible thing to say. And, yeah. and, and um, I mean, Bruno Fernandes was bothered. Yeah. You know, for, for whether bothered, people yeah. like his antics and he's mm. a very emotional player, at least he runs around a lot. Yeah. At least at least he's it trying to make things him, yeah. right. But other players, between youthful and find it difficult in this situation, I'm thinking of your, your Hoyland, your Garnachos, didn't have a great game. Mainu in midfield as well, that's difficult when everybody, when he's encouraged, by the way, yeah, he's yeah. encouraged Mainu and forward, Bruno yeah. to run forward. And your insurance policy is Casemiro, yeah. who's been a brilliant player, Absolutely. but at 32 brilliant years player. of age, he's it, with those distances that we talked yeah, about from the front to the back, he's got to cover these huge amounts of area, which is the manager's tactical situation Settle, throw yeah. from, from Attitude of the squad, the mm. things are changing, mm. to the tactics of the manager, to the profile of some of the players being a little older yeah. and some being allowed to run forward as much as they want and not that bothered about running back. You ended up with a game, like a game of two ends of the field, yeah, a game like in the defensive end tens football, and then it? a game at the other like end when they ends. won the ball. Yeah, so, I mean, better second half, Rob, mm. where I thought Man United, I'd describe it, they went from awful to average. They had some decent shape, a little bit more together, and they looked a little better. But still, even the second half, uh, it wasn't as though Man United okay. finished strong yeah. and they looked like... They get it, I, I was sort of listening to a few um, radio shows last night and you're trying to pick up a feed up. And, and uh, I kind of, in my head, was thinking, Rob, has there, ever, has there been a game or a couple of games where you've seen United... You know, certain teams can almost cruise at, at a certain point. Ah, uh, we're 2-0 up, we cruise. You know, you know, they stop the opposition. Control the opposition. You know, Man City do it, Liverpool do it. We're talking about that's where United won a game. I always feel like United are, are like at full stretch to get a, a draw, and it's mm. all out. There's never, there's never no control, crew, you know, comfortable possession and keeping well, you, the ball. Yeah, and you can control the game with possession. Yeah, with possession. Yeah. They're, they're not great at that, and mm. I think the manager says that they're not really built for that. They're built okay. for transition football. They, they want to be the greatest transition team in the world. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then the control comes from defensive shape yeah, and yeah, structure sure, and yeah. like a Mourinho type mm. of deal where mm. we're really strong, strong defensively yeah, and we're, 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 we're sprung, Bro ready, ready to, to hurt you on the counter. That would be that side of it. Mm. So I think at times... Is he caught between the two? Does he, is he caught between being at Manchester United and thinking we have to I, play I, a I bit? I don't think he... I, I, maybe. 
maybe, but I don't think they're good at, they're certainly not good at possessing and bossing mm. like, mm. like an Arsenal is or a yeah. Man City is or sometimes a Brighton is, you know, yeah. that style. Um, but they're not good defensively, are they? If they were really, really strong defensively and were tight, and then they had the, the, the Ganacho and Rashford and Bruno playing the balls in, I kind of yeah. don't mind it. Yeah. I, I prefer the proactive, creative, expansive mm. football. But if a team is good at doing that side of it, but they haven't shown that. Yeah. So I don't know where he goes, Rob, where I, I want to be a transitional team, but we're not very strong defensively to be, yeah, to be yeah, effective to at that, that. Because yeah. when you're defensive, you're going to yeah. invite pressure I mean, and, and stuff from the opponents. To give him some kind of, of out. They've been missing a lot of players. Martinez, yeah, they are. Varane, Defenders. Lindelof, yeah, Luke Evans, Shaw. Luke Shaw. Would make a difference. Would make a difference in that defensive area. Yes, accepted. But the distances and stuff, mm, no. I, you know, I, I don't know how that happens. Mm. I don't know how that, that space and, and different players might... But the manager, I mean, surely, surely managers like, yeah, oh, what? yeah, we yeah, see all this, yeah, close it up. With, with so I, I don't know. I, I can't see how Ineos, the new kind of owners in some ways, the, the guys in charge of the football side, I don't know how they would continue without Ten Hag. I mean, no, we were I talking understand. Champions League, weren't we? That would probably be the thing to that's what, I, I, I said that a few, but I mean, that's he's now not in happening. what seventh spot? That's not happening. Six Champions League's not happening. Fourth or fifth, they're what they 10 points behind. Yeah. Six games to go. That's not happening. Um, I mean, listen, an, a, a podcast for another day in terms of who would be the right mm, guy for Man United. Yeah. And I understand there's not many of them that yeah. that would maybe be right. Um, but I, I don't. I think it, I think it'd be wasted time if if they continue with Eric Ten Hag into next season. Mm. I just don't see enough. Uh, and the backward step from last year, which was good, yeah. to this is yeah. astonishing to me. And uh, seventh place right now. 23 points off the top mm. and the way that the, what you see with your eye I don't see it continuing do you do you see any way no. it continues I just think the guy who's, who's come into the football club running the football side now just Jim is is he wants best of class in, yeah. in what he does mate he's put yeah. good people in, in in places and I'm afraid I think he's, mm. he's going to find a coach mm. who's more suited to, to what he wants in his ambitions mm. let's talk about yeah. a really interesting game Rob it's at James's Park Newcastle v, v Tottenham um, two teams I, I, I was sort of wrote my notes it would have I think at the start of the season similar ambitions I know Newcastle within Champions League Tottenham had no European football which might have been a benefit to them um, another total <laughs> surprise Newcastle 4-0 against, against Spurs uh, Newcastle were excellent excellent in, in the Eddie Howe mold mo considering well, how many players Eddie he's Howe. got out as well by the way he's got know, another 10, team that's out yeah Against the Spurs team, Rob, and I thought you made a really important point. I'll, I'll let you expand on it. Where you, I think you said the sparkle isn't quite yeah, there. Yeah, well, a, a few things I think with them. Yeah, mm. remember, remember the start. Like yeah. there, there oh, was sparkling, was, and James we Madison was like loving yeah, football, yeah. and we were like, wow, this is incredible yeah. what they're doing. Whilst accepting that it's kind of risky, I, I'm, and I know you kind of thought, and this is this is this kind of would back up your argument. Like, I know it is fun to watch, but oh, I don't know if that's sustainable. Every, every, I don't know if that's sustainable. Yeah. And, and, they, and it was sustainable and mostly successful being in the top four mm. because of the two central defenders, Romero Correct. and Van der Ven, that, yeah. that, that are perfect Incredible. in some ways yeah. for how they play because when it does turn over, yeah. they leave two centre-backs yeah. back, two players back. And, and the pace and the aggressive nature of those two have been okay. Now, so two things have to go wrong. The football from Spurs to have a bad day. Yeah. It's give the balls be, away. Give, give the ball away. Loose, yeah. so transition yeah. turnovers yeah. And, uh, the, is, is their the problem. Yeah. And then if your defenders have mm. a bad day, then you've got a real problem. Yeah. And Mickey van der Veen, <laughs> after me, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is getting crazy now where I, I, I pick out a player before yeah. the game. Yeah. Like, this guy's Highlight been really good. Player, it was yeah. Mickey yeah. van der Veen on, on yeah. field. Yeah. He's been superb, one of the best signers of the season. And I'm sorry, but I put a curse on these players. <laughs> he had an absolute shocker. He had a nightmare. His worst game in a Spurs <laughs> shirt, slipping over, um, get caught out of position, like for the for the second goal, yeah. um, the ball went over for Isaac's second goal. Yeah. So those two things, bad football. Mm. Okay, we're into transition. Defenders usually help us out. They didn't. Yeah. And 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 it was a great game plan from Eddie Howe, and he said Absolutely. about it afterwards. Yeah. He made big changes. Worked, you picked he? out you picked out the. Uh, he went to back three, thing. didn't he? Uh, he went yeah. back three out with possession, and then a back five out of possession to stop those full backs with Ogi and Porro coming in. He put extra numbers in midfield. And then when they won that, those quick turnovers with their possession, they went over the top to Isaac and, and, and Gordon, Gordon and Barnes. And Barnes. They were all quick. Very, Robert, very fast. All very, very fast. Yeah. It, it, was, it was incredible. 
Um, I, I just, again, I, and, and, and I love Ange, and, and you, you're right, he's brought a, a sparkle back to Spurs that we hadn't seen under the other managers, despite whether they're winning or losing games. I'm just at the point, Rob, and, and, and I hate to go don't, there. Don't too, go there yet. Too far. Not, Keep not that, no, not that I've, I've not stopped believing. I've just started to say that he's starting to get a little bit annoyed. Like, he, he, he's adamant, and I'm not saying But change. he was angry after the... He, he, he was angry. It was a bad yeah, day. It was a bad, yeah, it was a bad day, and yeah. most things were. But isn't, isn't there, is he allowed to just... Isn't he allowed to just say, actually, it's not a good day today. We, I'm just going to... I'm just going to do this. To, to keep doing that, regardless of the scoreline, regardless of the position, regardless of where you're standing in the league, he's going to keep doing the same thing. I just but feel... But, 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 but better. But better. He wants yeah. to do it better. Yeah. And he doesn't I want to give the ball away. He wants his defenders to defend. I understand that. Mm. But some days, Rob, we've all played yeah. football. Yeah. You give it away. You, you, you start playing and you give it yeah, away. But what does that mean, though? So you, so for those bad days, you want to change the philosophy and the No, I don't want to change. I'm, I'm not saying this. These are international high quality, high technical players. I'm saying on days when, actually, we keep giving it away and, and they keep getting in behind us, Isaac and, and, and Gordon keep exploiting you, us. You want them to go to a, a plan? A, B, something, C. a half different, plan, different. just a mm. tweak. I know, we said this, but we got yeah, this Just a little before. tweak yeah, that, that says, well, okay, it's not, it's not our daily. Madison's not, not winning the ball, you know. We're not hurting him down the wide areas. Poro and, and, and Udogi are not getting they on the ball. They didn't have good games, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Madison wasn't, wasn't. No. Wasn't affected. prominent at all. Yeah, I, I think he admitted it's his worst day. Yeah, and he said it was a really bad day at the office, mm. and he said, I think he said like food, food for thought. This, mm. this food for thought, and whether he rethinks his philosophy, you know, maybe into next season mm. has something a little different. Maybe only one of the fullbacks yeah. goes crazy. Yeah, yeah, whether yeah. he tweaks it, mm. I, I, that's a sign of a, of, yeah, a, 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 I of think of a it. bright manager, right, and progressive try, manager yeah, at this who sees level this in this league, league. and, and yeah. realizes actually away from home in certain places. Mm. Can I just finish on with this game? The Newcastle United striker. Yeah, I'm glad you've went. I'm, I'm glad you've well, He's I'm, 24 I'm, years of age, yeah. Swedish centre yeah. forward, mm. and outside of Alexander Isak, and I'm sorry, Ollie Watkins, I think he's the best nine. Outside of Alexander e Outside, uh, outside of, Ollie of Watkins. Uh, Harland. So, yeah. And I apologise to uh, Ollie Watkins. Because he's, yeah. he's yeah. numbers are. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, 19, he's, he's he? got 19 now, 19. I think. I think he's, he's the second best number nine. Isaac, yeah. at 24. Yeah. And I think he's got the potential with the way that he plays. He's a centre forward that I particularly like. He's, Somebody a, he's a modern centre forward. Well, yeah. yeah, but he's different to... He's different, he's different to, to Tony, who's, I think, a little Tony, bit Tony, different to Watkins. Yeah. He's, he's got a little swagger mm. about his play. And I know that Arsenal may be looking for a centre forward. And I knew Newcastle United and Eddie Alcala, he ain't going anywhere. Yeah. But if there is a centre forward that you... If anybody asks me, who should Arsenal go and buy... Yeah. It's Alexander mm. Isak. Mm. He's knows, got the class, the, the quality, the skill, football. the talent, the goal scoring, the age, the future Couldn't to be a brilliant more. striker at Arsenal and maybe a couple of others. And I'm not saying he's going to go, yeah, but I, yeah. I just, I am forever impressed by a guy. Well, I, I like a, a striker that can do something like, yeah, wow. Yeah. And, it, and he's got that, isn't he? Absolutely. Um, and I don't disagree. What I would say, and, and, and to, to, to add to your point though, what I would say is if Newcastle United are ambitious, you know, Joe Ellington's just signed, Bruno's yeah, signed. Yeah, he, yeah. He's one of them you yeah. build a team around. Totally. And by the way, with what could be happening up there, I'm the number nine at Newcastle, Rob. We know yeah, it's legend. you'll be loved. You're legend, legend. don't you? Yeah. You're a legend for life. Yeah. And just, again, before we move on, Rob... Like, I just want one more player there, one more player at Newcastle. OK, it might tie in what I'm right. going to say. Because there's so many injuries all season, mm. we haven't really seen the, 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 the true Newcastle United. No, not we since haven't. very early on. We haven't had Tonali yet. Yeah, 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 He's yeah, had yeah, injury issues. Harvey yeah. Barnes, a new signing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, you know, it, it, I, I'm, I'm, exci I'm excited yeah. to see mm. them next season now, like, and, and what they, they just start to find Europe their form. Well. They might get Europe, some kind of European place. But it, it still, ex it, it, it was such a shame because they built up the squad, some yeah, good signings, yeah. ready for this campaign of Champions League, and there's so many injuries Finishing, that, yeah. that end up being a very a difficult one. A few kids come through. Yeah. I just want to go to Anthony Gordon, mate. Anthony mm. Gordon, who is becoming sneaky important to the team was brought in and we know he had the, the issues initially, you know, with, with Eddie and bit highly strung when he came off one game and people were thinking, Rob, he plays either side. Um, mm -hmm. a, a bit. He play he's played he centre play forward. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him in the League Cup against Man United. He was outstanding. His attitude looks spot on. He, Rob, 
right now, for me, is ahead of James Madison to get in the England squad mm. for the for the. Yeah, year. Madison's had a real bad period. It's a good point, and and I think there's full of them, full of them. You know, whether mm. it's Harvey Barnes. Um, I mean, you think about midfield. I mean, Bruno Bruno Gamarish, by the way, yeah. is brilliant. Yeah. He's just a yeah. really top midfield player. You've got Sandro Tonali, the, the Italian, yeah. to come back next year, yeah. possibly, hopefully, probably. Um, Luis Smile, he's done well. Luis Smile has come in yeah. and has had a breakout season. Defensively, maybe need another. Yeah. A couple of defenders, yeah. maybe. Mm. But they ain't far away from being a really, yeah. really good team Pop if they stay fit and healthy. Yeah. All right, mate. Uh, let's just wrap around some of the other games. Yeah. You know, so West Ham United, Neil Fulham, too. Fulham, funny yeah. team, Fulham. Pereira, you never know what you're going to get. Like, yeah. Well played, though. You know, no relegation problems, 42 points, yeah. 12th in the league. Well done, Marcus. Silver. West Ham, just quick line on West Ham United. David Moyes, is it good we go one week? Like, <laughs> yeah. it, there was, there was some, some talk, wasn't there, this week of, of they, 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 they're honing in on a, on a target? Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah they, they, there was, was it talk, wasn't week? it? Yeah. A foreign coach, was it? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It yeah. seems unfair on David Moyes. I just yeah. see David Moyes saying that, you know, he, he said, like, in an interview, um, I know there's been more exciting managers at West Ham, but, mm. but I win more. Okay. <laughs> I win more. Yeah. And he's right. I mean, West Ham United... 2-0 down to Leverkusen, though, aren't they, in the Europa? So, yeah. obviously, that's yeah. a tough one, the yeah. way that they're going, yeah. Leverkusen, as well. Nottingham Forest, two walls to you. I know you're watching this game. It was um, some game, on it? It was a great game. I, I, I'm, I, I like both teams. Mm. I like both managers. You know, I, I, like, I just do. Nottingham Forest, Rob, real quick, I don't want to be too long on... on it's, mm. it's been a long show right now. I feel they're so close, Nottingham Forest. They're so close, like to being really good front foot. I love the atmosphere at the City Ground. Yeah, the Forest yeah. fans are totally up for it. I like the manager. I love the the the, the attacking line. Alango yeah. was out, a small injury, I think, in the last game uh, against Tottenham. So Gio Reyna came in. There were some flashes from yeah, him, yeah. some flashes, some mm. shots. He came really narrow from the nice. right-hand side to play in and around Morgan Gibbs-White. Hudson Adore looked bright. Chris Wood's a goal scorer. You know, Danilo scored yeah, from midfield. Yeah, I kind of like them. They're so mm. close. But Gary O'Neill at Wolverhampton Wanderers continues to impress us, Rob. Tactically, yeah. he did have Matthias Cunha back that made all the difference, scored a couple of goals for them. Ended up 2-2. But two, it was a really entertaining game of football. Yeah. And that's where we are now, Rob, in the Premier League. Yeah. That, that wherever you look up and down the league table, entertaining football, goal scorers, bright managers. Yeah. It was a really good game. And unfortunately for Forrest, of course, need those points mm, to get yeah. away from the relegation zone. The goal came <clears throat> from the, the two goals from Cunha, made it a 2-2 and only a point. But I, I still believe in what I'm seeing with Forrest. And I think, you know, we'll see what happens with the points appeal, whether they yeah, get anything yeah, back. But, yeah. um, but it was a good game. It was a really good game. Uh, Burnley won Brighton won. I think two goalkeeping errors for me on this one. Van Bruggen with, oh. came out and kind of hit Brownell. Ball goes in the net. And then Murich, I mean, Rob, 70 oh. minutes on the clock for Burnley. It's just disaster time disaster. for Vincent Company and, and Burnley that he makes a, a real error. Uh, and with it goes another two points. Uh, Brighton lost a little bit of that sparkle. Brighton for Millie in, in the season, um, but take a point on the road. Burnley dropped two. Uh, and Brentford yeah, to Sheffield win. United win. Big, big win, win for I heard that the, the owner came down after the game, give uh, Thomas Frank a, a big hug, Venom, as it the owner, because yeah, he just felt as though like, they were getting, know, a, little they were getting a little bit close. And Did he come down? He came down, that. came down to give him a big yeah. hug, and that, how important the game was. I feel like now they're, what are they, on 32 points. Yeah, when you're into 30s yeah, nowadays, you yeah. need another, probably another three or four points, mm. and they should be okay. Is that it, my friend? That's it, my there's friend. One Just more game, remind you tomorrow yeah. there's one more game. We'll be working on that. It's Chelsea v Everton. Two teams with plenty of going on around the scenes in both clubs. Pochettino always under pressure. Mm. Everton with the points deduction and Sean Dyche wanting to get things right and, and get some points on the board. So we're looking forward to that one. But, mate, it's been a dramatic weekend in the Premier League as ever. Manchester City do what City do. They win. But Liverpool and Arsenal, I'm afraid they lose and give City top place in the Premier League. We'll be back next week, match week 34. We'll have the Premier League games and also two FA Cup semi finals from Wembley. Man City play Chelsea, Coventry play Manchester United. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with two Robbie. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good, good night. night. Hello, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.